celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Jenny Ryan. Now, Jenny studied creative writing at York, specializing in poetry. She's had short stories published in Grain, Paper Plates, and other magazines. She had a short story produced on CBC Sound Exchange, and she had a choose-your-own-adventure in real-time YA novel published. She won the 2007 inaugural Canada Writes Competition, earning, earning the title, The Funniest Writer in Canada. These days, she's involved in improv comedy and writing stand-up. Please welcome Jenny. Jenny, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you. So tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. You've, you've written in so many different genres. You're, you're in stand-up, comedy is sort of where you're writing now. Tell me a little bit about that journey. Well, I started as a, I was a, I was always a writer. So from a very young age, I was a person who always wrote stories. And um, I wrote a lot of short stories. And so I saw myself as a short story writer and um, went to university with the aim to be um, a novelist or a short story writer. And I wrote very seriously. I was like, I was going to write, you know, I was very inspired by Margaret Atwood. So I was a very serious writer. And then I discovered I liked writing poems. And so I started really focusing on poetry, but again, very serious. So I was a very serious writer. And um, then I went off and realized writing was hard. It's a hard job <laughs> to be a writer. And I became a librarian and I still, but then I kind of started doing improv, which is, um, doesn't have to be comedic, but in Saskatoon it has a real comedic feel. And so I was sort of doing comedic theater, um, but not really realizing that it was writing. And then a friend of mine suggested that I enter this Canada Writes thing. And he's like, you're really funny on stage. I think you're actually really funny in person, but you don't write funny. Um, and so then I started writing. I ended up winning this contest um, because I was clever and quick and discovered that I really liked writing humorously and I was really good at it. And I had always been a funny person in real life, but on the page, I was very serious. So I started incorporating humor into my short stories. And then I had a child and I stopped writing entirely. I had written, um, you know, novels that were rejected by very significant people in the world of writing, but no one ever published anything. And then I wrote this uh, YA novel. It was a choose your own adventure where I would write um, a chapter in and then kids would vote on what they wanted to have happen next. It was a British publishing company. And so then depending on what the kids voted, then I had like three days to write the next chapter. So it was very high pressure, um, but didn't have a kid at this point. So before I had my child, I was doing this and it was very exciting and I was it was funny. I was writing this funny kids book, funny YA book. And then my son was born and I just didn't have the energy to do it anymore. So I stopped um, writing entirely. And then somebody suggested I try stand up because they're like, you know, you can write really short things. And um, so that's what I do now. So at some point, I'd like to get back into writing um, my hybrid of funny and serious fiction. But for now, I write a lot of jokes. And do, do you see um, a difference in your when you sit down to write a difference in writing for the page and writing for the stage? <sighs> yeah. I actually, I described it to a friend once. I was saying how I was this trained poet and how I miss writing poetry, but I actually feel like a joke is the emotional flip side of a poem. So I have a joke I write about going to a UFC, a UFC event, which is Ultimate Fighting Championship. And it's when I, the joke is about going to as sort of this non-sporty, non-athletic feminist person um, going to a UFC event and watching what happens when women are the headline match. So it was women who were the, I don't even know the terminology, but they were the, they were the main event. And to see what happens to 80,000 men when women take center stage. And so I realized, I wrote a joke about that. And the joke was very much about um, sort of the, I find the humor in, in the fear and the anxiety of that, but the whole thing is a punchline. Um, it ends up being getting laughs from an audience. And I realized you could write that entire thing and have the flip side of that would be a poem, which would not be the funny part of that, but maybe would focus on um, fear and insecurity, but would result in a very emotional, different emotional path, but would examine the same stuff. And then you could write a story about that. You'd write a short story about that, that would kind of have all, both the elements. So I realize it's just I don't know if that makes sense, but a joke to me is sort of the emotional um, flip side of a poem. And I actually, this friend challenged me and said, well, you should write poems about all your jokes and jokes about all your poems. And you'll have different different versions of that same story. So, Well, that sounds good. That's good mileage yeah. out of experiences yeah. and out of observations, which yeah. are 
you're always looking at the world, I suppose. How, how do you look at the world when you're, when you're looking for jokes? Um, I think what I try to do um, with a joke is, and I don't think everyone has to do this. I think there's value in just making people laugh about the world, um, about your life. But I always seem to find I want to spend time and energy writing jokes that maybe challenge people's perceptions or... Um, uh, I think it's because so much of joke telling and so much of stand up is out of the house. So when you're when you're writing, you may be isolating yourself from your family, but at least you're in the family home. <laughs> you can put your kid to bed and then you can still be there and still get up to give them a glass of water while you're writing a short story or a novel or a poem. But if you're doing stand up, you spend a lot of your time in CD bars. Um, you tuck your kid in and then you say, mommy's gone for the night. So I think a lot of the time that I spend out of the house telling jokes in CD bars is because I'm trying to tell jokes that maybe help people look at the world in a different way or maybe I talk about feminist issues or I talk about um, uh, climate change or po political political things in ways that make things accessible but hopefully are making people um, I'm just I, again I'm, I'm maximizing my, my time and do you think that through the lens of, of female eyes you're you're doing that in a different way than than a male writer well for sure yeah I mean for sure I think when I started doing stand-up in Saskatoon there weren't a lot of women who were doing stand-up um and I just think it gives a different perspective and it also encourages a lot of other women to to come forward and share their stories and I know part of the reason I started stand-up was because I was doing improv with a bunch of women and we would have women come up to us and say how do you get started how do you do this and it is sometimes easier for people or more accessible for people to do stand-up because you're by yourself, you um, you don't have to worry about having a team, there's more opportunities, more open mics for stand-up, and there's more role models. There's far more Netflix specials of people doing stand-up than doing improv. So you have more of a, there's more of a community out there. So I think a lot of women um, wanted to start trying and writing in that way and finding their voice in that way. And so I'm, I'm happy to uh, help bring those women along with me and say, let's do this as a collective. And I think more and more women are in the city are finding that's a great way to share their stories. Um, so yeah, I think, I don't know if that answered your question it at does, all. It did. <laughs> and, and just tell us, we're just about out of time, but just sure. tell me a little bit about the name, your, your collectives that you're part of that oh. you are, because you are with some very funny women. Yeah. So the improv part of me, so I do stand up alone. I'm a just stand up person by myself. Um, I get on stage alone, but I, when I do improv, which I still do, I'm with a group of women called the Lady Bits uh, Improv Comedy Collective. So there's a trio of us and we perform as a collective um, of improvisers and we also teach classes and we uh, bring other women on stage with us and we encourage other women to, have, to, have, to try their hand at whatever comedy is for them. And I think one of the great things that I love about the, the comedy scene is the number of women that are coming through and how supportive they are of the other women yes. who want to be funny and yeah. do funny things. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're out of time, Jenny. Sure. I'm so glad I got to have you on yeah, the show today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm Danica Lore, and this is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by looking for Lit Happens on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. You can email me at danicalore at gmail.com if you have a show idea. Thank you so much for watching.